And finals time now for the ladies. With number one for Belgium, Bea Pintons. So there she is, the local girl, Bea Pintons. Who wasn't uh, in the overall standings at the end of day one. She came fourth in the 1500 metres yesterday. Using this as uh, a good warm up for the Olympics. Simone Belzeboa, the blonder of the two sisters. Not quite as good as uh, older sister, came third in the 1500 metres. And uh, Isakova, the Russian girl, came fourth in the 500. And here's the star, Monique Velzaboa. Gold in the 500 metres in the Olympics, second in the 500. She was disqualified in the 1500 metres yesterday, so she's going to be going for it. And the two Velzaboa sisters, very much teamwork. And closest to us is Monique Velzaboa. Beer Pinton's uh, taking the inside line, but out in front, Monique Velzaboa. Then Beer Pinton's. Then Simon Velzaboa. And then Natalia Isakova. So the Dutch very, very strong in these uh, speed skating disciplines. The short track, of course, you're watching here is brand new sport in the Olympics, in the Winter Olympics. It was a demonstration sport last time out in Calgary. And uh, there's a lot of excitement. The British team are putting in seven skaters into the Olympics. We've unfortunately lost uh, Debbie Palmer, as I said a little earlier on. She's here, but not quite as strong as the guys are on the international standings board. Nine laps of this 110 meter course. It's actually 111.12 meters. You can take the tightest way round. Okay, now the girls trying to get into a good tactical position as you see the two Dutch girls out in the front now. And my word, they're starting to pile on some of the pressure now. The world record for 1,000 metres. I don't expect it to, to uh, get very close to it here. It's 1.39, 1 minute 39. But it's extraordinary to see how strong the Dutch girls are now. Look at this. And as they come round to the bell, Monique Velzaboa powers ahead. The Russian girl, Natalia Isakova, in second position and Beer Pinton's hanging on in third. So five points, which is the number of points they award for a final win. And uh, we have a look at the problems here with Simone. She was hanging on in there, just behind her sister, just lost uh, what we would call the outside edge of the left hand, the inside edge of the left hand ski. I'm sure she's all right. The, the crash barriers stop them even when they're at uh, flat out speed like that. So there's a few more laps just to get her confidence back. And the great young sport this is. Exciting stuff. Is she all right? And we have a look as Monique looks over her shoulder and she knows she's got the Russian beat, stands up, crosses the line, acknowledges the crowd and wins in 146.18. And that shows you how fast that world record is that's uh, owned by Yang Hee Kim of Korea, 138.93 set in Hamar in 1991. So confirmation of the results there. Holland from Russia, from Belgium, from Holland. The two Vels Boas up there on the board again. One point going to Simone, of course. So on with the men now. With number 22, Mitchell Williams. With number 15 from Great Britain, William O'Reilly. There's the man. We're keeping our eyes on. Will O'Reilly, or Willie O'Reilly, as they seem to be calling him here. 28 years of age, only five foot eight. Comes from Sutton Coldfield. Used to go to Wolverhampton Poly, actually. And I used to hang out in Wolverhampton. And of course, his claim to fame is 500,000 metre golds in Calgary in the demonstration sport. The other guys, Orazio Fogoni, Roberto Peretti, and Mirko Villeman. Three Italians here. Just shows how strong the Italians are. And O'Reilly is going to have his work cut out here to, to keep them from blocking him in. Nine laps of this Leiderkirche rink. Of course, one of the beauties of short track racing and why it's become so popular. Look at this for tactics. The boy's just cruising around. 
is because you can use your own local rink for training and that's what's been so important with O'Reilly using a lovely new rink at Telford a lot for his training. Of course, there's uh, plenty of venues around the UK, but it's incredible to see the three Italians out there. And uh, one lone Union Jack, he really is. So with uh, Gert Blanchard out of it after his fall in the quarterfinals, which we saw, it really is down to uh, O'Reilly to make some impact here and think tactically very carefully. He's a very strong sprinter, O'Reilly. So in this sort of event, you'd expect to, him to wait almost until the bell before making any moves. He's not going to be able to tire these Italians out. Like a team event is not losing, they like it. So, Fagoni is probably the strongest of the Italians at the moment. Although he didn't have a win in uh, 1500 and, or 500, and Moretti hasn't had a win either. Willemin is the only man who's had a win, and he had a win in the 500 metres yesterday. As they come round to the bell, then it's O'Reilly moves out. Now, what is he going to do? Is he going to use his sprint? He's got to use his extra power in his sprint now as he comes to the line. And it just shows you how fast that man is. And he grabs another five points, does Wilf O'Reilly. And a man who is eight times British champion between 83 and 91. He's the 1991 World Short Track Champion, which he got in Sydney, Australia. He's got two gold medals. He's one of Britain's best sporting stars. Wonderful style here, keeping his cool, forcing the Italians round the outside and then taking the short way through to the line. One of the Italians went screaming off into the barriers round the back there. I don't know whether you saw that. That was Mwerko Brilliman trying too hard. So well done to Wilf O'Reilly. Another notch. Another sculpt for his belt. OK, we move on to the longer distances now. And this is the ladies' 3,000 metres. I say longer, it's 27 laps. Julia Alagalova, who went off in the 1,000 metres, will be looking to try and do something here, surely. There's uh, Vlaslova, two Julias in, in this one. And a much bigger field, of course, as well. You've met all these gels before. We have... As it's a longer race, you have uh, eight girls who are drawn out of the hat. It's rather like a starting grid in on a on a motor racing track. The front girls obviously get the best. There's Simon Belzebar. And then, uh, because it's not wide enough, they pop a couple of girls behind as well. Once again, no British uh, interest in this. 3,000 metres. It's very much um, held by the Japanese. They got the gold medal in Calgary, or Eiko Shishishi did. And the young lady, Maria Rosa Candida from Italy, is the world record holder. Look at this for tactics, which she achieved in Budapest in 1988. We'll be looking at uh, Marinella Canclini. It's really strange. Candido was competing here yesterday. If we look at the charts, we see that uh, she didn't even get past the quarterfinals. She got into third place in the quarterfinals, so the world record holder out of it already. Anyway, let's concentrate on the event in hand with Monique Belzaboa out in the front. Beer Pinson second. Italian girl Marinella Canclini third. Doesn't really mean anything. Natalia Isakova, the Russian, in fourth. 
The girl who fell, Alec Olova, 29, with the yellow helmet. And the crowd clapping, saying, come on, girls, get on with it. But, I mean, a lot of this is... It's what it's all about, tactics, and it's what makes it so exciting. 27 laps, as I said, of the course, of the rink. And now Alagalova takes up the pace. The two Russian girls, Julia Vlasova, trying to keep together, but uh, Monique's not having any of that. And Bea Pinton wants to uh, hang on in there as well. So you're going to start to see the pace picking up now. And the Russian girl comes through on the outside. So the Russians are trying to make their presence felt. Very well poised, as is uh, Bia Pinton. So now Canclini, the Italian, takes up the front row. Give you some idea of the world record he's fighting.